Israel, David, Israel comes forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We do brach our Abba for all things, above all for the excellence of his testimony that we have in Yahshua Hamashiach. For there is no greater delight than to understand the excellence of his power. That is simply to say that the effectiveness of his Torah through the power of the Ruach, the witness, the life of Yahshua Hamashiach, it is a very dynamic, powerful instrument for Yisrael. And the reason that we have not been able to even utilize a small percentage of it is because we have not had the ears to Shemach. We do not have the ability to hear and to obey him with a great delight. When one truly loves someone, then there's a great delight in the will to obey and to exercise in all the commands that he speaks unto us as his people, as Yisrael, as his elect, those that he has sealed by the witness of his truth, Yeshua Hamashiach. I was saying to the Zachin that it is one thing that is missing out of the bosom of Yisrael is that we have no capability of discerning. And what discerning is, it is not one squinching one's eyes or getting some kind of goosebumps or feelings. It is based on one principle, and that is the ability uh, to make assessment, to judge according to the jurisprudence of the Torah. You assess them by what the Torah says, and when we have the living power of that Torah in our bosom, then we judge according to the Ruach of Almighty Yah. That is what this sermon is. It is the ability to assess, to judge, to make assessment that one may formalize an opinion about the matter. Anytime we formalize an opinion about any matter, it is because we have assessed the matter and then we have made judgment of the matter. We are people that's fearful to discern, to make judgment, because our lives and our lifestyles are circumspect. Because with the same kind of judgment that we judge one another, we must expect that to be upon us and we don't judge people according to the integrity of the Torah is because our lives are not representative of what the Torah commands us to do and then we tend to judge according to our corruption and once we began to do that then we will operate in an unjust spirit that will condemn us and separate us from almighty Yah. And that's why this Jezebel taught us, uh, I don't judge anyone. Anytime you form an opinion, uh, you're making an assessment uh, to judge. And that's what this whore has taught us. Uh, and we continue to operate in that spirit. We're going to judge the Melechim. We're going to judge the world, the people of Yah. And if we're going to do that, then you tell me by the Ruach of Yah, we cannot judge the smallest of matters among Israel. Is there, a no, is there no discernment at all among us that we have no ability to judge or to make assessment? Something is drastically missing from us. We honor Yah with our lips and our voices, but he said the love is far from him. As I was reading the presidential list of the dinner tonight for Mr. Hu of China, I counted each individual 225. And they had names like the most honorable Swarcroft or the most honorable Ying Zhang Ding. These names, they were honorable men as they perceive. Yet we set before the most honorable one that has created all things. Yet we don't have the conscience as to who we sit before this evening. You must understand when they enter in through that facility, their names are pronounced. The most honorable Swarcroft is here. 
And so everyone will turn to the attention to the war cross. Whomever the most honorable one is, or Sir Richard Johnson of Coca-Cola, these are the individuals that were invited. Not one peasant, not one that of the lowly stake. Yah's going to rip this Jezebel down because she is a vile prostitute. I want to say this. I will continue on in the Pala, the prayer, how effective is the power of prayer here this is a nation that they talk about some of the most vilifying atrocities in the land of china whereby there is no quote uh, human rights unquote whereby the people work for meager wages they take advantage of any kind of dissent if anyone speaks against the government, they are house arrested. And it is one of the most purest forms of communism. Whereby the government and the power of the government rule oppressively. Yet we have a small nation down south 90 miles off the coast of Miami, Florida. A little nation that is called Cuba. And this most reputed damnable twisted whore will not even sell the people grain will not have any kind of system of fair trades yet there's a system of fair trade with china because this prostitute america has sold herself so with such liberality yeah, that she is in the tune of death of one trillion dollars uh, under the bondage of this massive dragon uh, that is prostituting uh, this nation uh, and the people of this nation and yet here sits off the coast of us uh, this little people whose skin is dark colored uh, brown and black yet there is no trade at all because uh, with mr castro uh, and mr sheikh shivara they said, you damn children of hell out of this nation. Shall I cast you out? You have robbed our citizens. You have made them plow in your sugarcane fields and your tobacco fields. You have paid them pennies for an hour of a day's work. And they said, no more, you rich, dirty bastards that are out of the gates of hell. And that's what they are. They're dirty bastards. They have no connection with the Most High. They have been birthed out of a false delusion of darkness by engagement of wicked practices that are so vile and hideous that they have no conscience of the Most High. There is no regard for anything that is honorable and pure. And they will invite uh, an eastern dog in and sit down with this dog. Uh, and yet a, an old man that resisted the tyranny of this damnable twisted nation. Uh, yet they will not even sell corn to that nation unless they have cash. And so Mr. Castro would allow a certain amount of people to flee because he know that they will send money back home to those that they will take care of. And this is the only way that they're able to amass enough money to even purchase food and substance for the people. And because we as a people, we don't understand the power of Yah. We really don't particularly give a damn about him, and we don't care. We are not even conscious of even the plight of the peoples of the world, because we just don't give a damn. We will pray for a wicked daughter, a son that defiles Yah for Yah to save them, but we will not pray Yah uh, this day, feed Israel with the lechem, uh, the bread. Because we just don't give a damn. We have no ability to discern. We don't even have the ability to understand the things that are of Yah. He's giving us ears to hear, but we hear not. Something 
is drastically wrong, Yisraya, when the table of the wicked will sit down even as they have on this evening here in these states of America. And yet in the midst of great plights that the people are enduring, not any layman or a simple man was invited to their satanic ritual to eat and to drink like dogs and to identify others as honorable and the most honorable name upon the face of the earth. It is not even spoken out of their mouths. They are children of an illicit affair that has produced this bastard mind that rejects everything that is of Yah. Now, I don't particularly care whether you concur, whether you acknowledge it, whether you uh, discern that I speak truth, but that is what it is. And if we will search the Chatve, we will see what Yah says about a bastard. Even down to the 10th generation, Yah says, a bastard will not enter into my bayat. You will not understand my principles of the power of spiritual knowledge and truth. And yet, he says, and Eureka, he will not enter in for a certain period of time, but a bastard uh, down to ten generations. He can never enter in uh, to the bayats of Yah. And ten generations uh, would put it at five hundred years. And in the tyranny of this most damnable twisted nation, that those of the diasporas that have been brought here in slavery and bondage on slave ships, they were brought under the very tyranny of heathens and bastards. And they cannot enter into the spiritual realm of the knowledge of Torah. They can write in an intellectual sense, but they have no power to understand the depths of the spiritual realm of Almighty Yah. And we as a nation of people, we have taken upon the same kinds of habitual habits. We don't give a damn about Almighty Yah. I'm not going to dress up my grandma. I'm not going to speak it in a way to appease us. We have pleased ourselves too long. That Yah is not even in the conscience of the people uh, in this hour. He is not even uh, in our thoughts, in our conscience. Uh, and we have or uh, we offer up no kind uh, of pala. We don't pray. And there is no tefillah. There is no supplication. There is no interaction. Because first of all, he is not real to us. And if there is not a dedication unto meditating upon the Torah of Yah, he will never be real unto us. Yahshua said that you are my friends. You are no more my abbots, my servants. Because a servant knows not what the master does. And because we are still servants, not of Yah, but of our flesh... We don't understand what Yah is doing. We don't understand the power of Yahshua HaMashiach. We talk as though we do, but there is no, there is no expression of that that flows from the loins of Yisrael. We got to get this real Yisrael. We cannot be pretenders. But this must be sincere in our bosom. It must be real. It must be the practical action of our spiritual lives. That we grow and we prosper. We ascertain, we obtain the things that Yah intends for us to understand or obtain. That we have the spiritual riches of Yah. We have the might and the power of Yah. He has not collectively brought us together or scattered us just for some ill purpose. The power of your sure was to bring each stone, each building block. As Daiweed began to amass the material for the house, the beds of Almighty Yah. And it took... Shaloman, or Shaloman, Solomon, it took him seven years, the complete perfection of the cycle of Yah, seven years, to finish 
the house of Yah. 